Hi, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Yukun Zhang. I work on enterprise data science team at here at ADB. Um, I would like to share some experience of our recent participation at uh, Women in Data Science Datathon. Um, Women in Data Science is actually an annual meeting, uh, annual conference hosted by Stanford University. And this year they just started the Datathon. Um, it's to encourage women to apply their knowledge and also to engage in social impact solutions by participating in a predictive analytics challenge. And it was made possible by Stanford University, Kaggle, and other sponsors like Microsoft, SAP. And um, there was a requirement, because it's women in data science, so it requires at least 50% of the team members should be female, and the maximum team size is four. Um, so for me, I always wanted to join a Kaggle competition, because I think it's a dream of all the data scientists. And now we have a good reason, because we, as a female, we want to have some social impact. And also, it's a good opportunity to represent ADB. At the same time, I've got great, great, great team members that can encourage and inspire me. So I think it's, that's the best opportunity um, to join the, the Capgo competition. So um, there are other three team members. Uh, we are all from Enterprise Data Science. Um, they are Gunjan, uh, Samil, and Michael. Um, and the, the data song ran, uh, it, it ran the whole February from 1st to 28th. And there were over 500 competitors from all over the world from uh, 231 teams. And that month, our team, Team ADB EDS, we made 82 submissions. And we ranked number two on public score, and we ranked 17 on private score. For those who are new to Kaggle, there are two scores in the Kaggle competition, private score and public score. The meaning of public score is that once you make your submission during the competition, you can see your number right away. And the leaderboard was rank, ranked on, based on public score. And in our case, it's based on 16% of the testing data. And Kaggle hide the other 84% of testing data away from you until the end of the competition. So before the end of competition, they ask you to submit two of your um, submissions. And based on these two submissions, they will rank, um, rank you based on the private score, which is from the 84% of testing data. Um, that's why we cannot predict what is our final score, what is our private score. And the data set is a representative sample of survey respondents from India. It contains demographic and behavioral information. It's about usage of traditional financial and mobile financial services. Our goal is to predict the gender of each survey respondent. And um, there are 12, 33 features. Um, I think only 20% of them are complete. So a lot of missing data. And I, um, they have numerical and, and categorical variables as well. And some example of the, the, the feature is that it's from the question like, how are you related to household head? What is your primary job? Does your household possess a fridge? Um, so our way to solve the, this problem is, first we did some feature engineering. As I said, a lot of them are missing. So uh, we did some data imputation to get a complete data set. We use one, one, one hot encoder to transform the categorical variables. We use um, extreme gradient boosting as our main method. And we select three best models from um, our 82 submissions, 81 submissions. And we assemble them to get our final result. Because I only have 15 minutes, so I'll skip the feature engineering part. And now I'll, I'll give a brief introduction to extreme gradient boosting, because I think I would need another 15 minutes for just for XGBoost. Um, when I talk about extreme gradient boosting, I think I should make it clear about boosting. What is boosting? Um, so instead of train one strong learner, we, we want to train several weak learners in sequence. And the current tree 
is informed about which examples the previous tree got wrong. And the observations has an unequal probability of appearing in subsequent model. And once with the highest error, appear most. So at the end of the training, each tree votes on how we classify uh, each example. This way, some, uh, the, the weakness of some learners can be, can be compensated by other models. And uh, gradient boosting is one of the popular usage of boosting. There are also other methods like ADA boosting, but here uh, gradient boosting is to use gradient descent to minimize the error. That's why it's called, called gradient boosting. And as for extreme gradient boosting, um, the, the meaning of extreme is to push the computation limits of a machine to extreme to get a portable, scalable, and accurate library. That's from the author. <laughs> it sounds like something in the brochure. <laughs> um, but um, XGBoost has been uh, the most popular method in Kaggle competition. In 2015, 17 out of 29 teams win Kaggle using this XGBoost. And the reason they love it, there are a lot of reasons, but um, one of the reasons is it's really fast. It's faster than scikit-learn, and, and also it's robust to um, overfeeding. So in the case when you have a lot of features, like 12, 33 features, or you're not sure which feature is important, if you throw in more features, it doesn't have a big impact on the accuracy. So I think that's also why a lot of people like it. Um, and there is another uh, advanced usage of gradient boosting. It's called light GBM. Um, that was released by Microsoft about two years later than XGBoost. And I should mention XGBoost is created by a PhD student, Tian Qi Chen, um, which I admire a lot. Um, and the difference between XGBoost and light GBM is that they are both uh, gradient boosting machine. But XGBoost grows the tree in a, in a level wise, but LightGBM grows the tree in a leaf wise. So by using the, by grow the tree in the leaf wise, we don't have to grow the other side of the, like in the, in the picture, you don't have to grow that leaf so that it's more um, efficient. And also, um, but the, the LightGBM can go very deep, so it, it can easily overfit the data. There is a maximum depth in the hyperparameter that you can, you can control. The reason I compare XGBoost and LightGBM is that um, I said XGBoost is fast. Actually, LightGBM is even faster than XGBoost. And they can uh, achieve similar accuracy. From the research uh, or exp examples I read, sometimes XGBoost is better, sometimes LightGBM is better. So, um, but light G GBM, it says it is around three times faster than XGBoost. And it has, it has a lower RAM usage. So for maybe now you ask me, why didn't you use light GBM? You use XGBoost, because we didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know light GBM was faster. Maybe because the name is light, but XGBoost is extreme. So <laughs> people tend to <laughs> select those, those methods. But uh, I've heard about LightGBM, but I didn't know it's faster. That's why I want to share this with you guys. And that's, I think a lot of you are curious, how could you drop from number two to 17? Because we trust the leaderboard, leaderboard score too much. Um, because all of us, four members in our team, we are all the first time Kaggler. So um, that's a big, one of the biggest lessons we learned. Um, because we can only see the public score. Sometimes our new experiment is an improvement in our local cross-validation score. But when we submit it, we didn't see an improvement. So we give up that, that uh, experiment and try to go the other direction. But that may be misleading sometimes. So the lesson we learn is that trust your local cross-validation score instead of the leaderboard score, because it's only based on in our case, is for 16% uh, of testing data. Um, and one minute, one minute after the competition end, we dropped, and our face was like this, this guy in this picture. 
so I want to share this experience with you so that you never have to be look like this, this guy. Um, so you see that our public score dropped from a 0.97545 to 0.97381. Um, that's because uh, we, our model was overfeeding. Um, it didn't generalize well in the new data set. But luckily, it's still the best model we selected in our final submission. Um, we actually found that our model was overfitting during the competition because we see that it's not performing as well in, in the, in the test, testing data as in the training data. So we know that it's overfitting. Um, the way we, we try to minimize, minimize this overfitting is through ensemble modeling. The idea of ensemble modeling is to combine two or more algorithms through bagging, boosting, or stacking. Those are the common method of ensemble modeling. By, by doing this model ensembling, uh, we can make our final decision more robust, accurate, and less likely to be biased. The method we chose was stacking. The meaning of stacking is that we have a, a few base layer learners. For example, you can use logistic regression, you can use neural nets, you can use other methods. The criteria is that it has to be reach a certain accuracy cri criteria. You definitely don't want to use a model that has 30% prediction accuracy. And also, it's better if those base layer models are not quite related. So that, um, like, like the, the boosting, the weak learners can be compensated by other models. So that's similar ideas. And in our result, for the three models we chose from um, three of our team members, the, the ensemble model performs better than any one of them. You see that it's a small improvement. For the 84% of testing data, the improvement was just 0 0.00064. But it boosted us up to 10 spots um, in, in, the, in the leaderboard. So, I think it's still very useful in the competition. So after I talk about our solution, you may ask, well, you didn't win the, the Kaggle. What's the point of talking about your solution? <laughs> I found that the winning team, they post their solution. I found them a couple of days ago. And I was happy because I see the general idea is very similar to ours, because we, um, we use a lot of our personal time to for the competition. Um, I think we didn't do as much research as what they did. Um, I see that, for example, they have two, two, they, have two, they have two members. I think that one of them used, that's the first step. He, uh, she used a mean encoder to, to do the feature engineering. And then they use light GBM with four sets of, it's actually hyperparameters. Uh, hyperparameters, and then she averaged her result and get one result. The other member used another feature engineering method and use the same light GBM with three other sets of hyperparameters, and they got they got the results averaged and blended. So they got another set of of result, and then they blended together. So um, that's what um, I want to summarize is the secret ingredients of getting to the top 10% of Kaggle competition is that first, um, do as much feature engineering as you can. One of the lessons is that we didn't spend a lot of time on feature engineering. And use a good, I used to put at XGBoost there, but after I found LightGBM, I changed it to gradient boosting model. Or maybe other models that became available that you think is good. And then make sure that you remember to do ensemble modeling. I think it's a good method because it it um, it's a team effort. You you get to select different models from different members and you ensemble them together instead of just pick one model from a certain person. Um, and also remember to do cross validation. Trust your cross validation score, not the leaderboard score, or you will have the that guy's face. 
Um, and for, for the final mo two models, pick very different models, because it doesn't make sense if you pick the same model with different sets of hyperparameters. It's better if you choose two different models. Mm, th that's our experience. I hope that it can encourage some of you to join the Kaggle competition. I think we learned a lot, and I think it's a good experience. Thank you. <laughs>